homemade Chicago deep dish pizza. Let's see what's cooking. Let's get the facts. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for yo yo facts. Twelve. Hello, everyone. For this recipe, you'll need one pound of Italian sausage that's been crumbled up and then fried until it is no longer pink. And when you're done, make sure you drain off all that excess grease. Then saute one half pound of mushrooms in a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of butter until they are tender and just lightly brown. And now on to the dough. That's one third of a cup of olive oil and one cup of hot water between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then in a large mixing bowl, place one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, quarter cup of cornmeal, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And then I gave that a little stir and then poured in the oil and water. And then realized I forgot to add the yeast. So I added the yeast at this point and it's one package, one quarter ounce, which is two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. I used the instant kind. Gave that a stir until the dough came together. It's going to be very sticky. And then you're going to turn that out onto a countertop that's been well floured. And you're going to knead the dough, adding little bits of flour as required. And you're going to knead it for about six or seven minutes until it's smooth and elastic and not super sticky. And I ended up using about another three quarters of a cup of flour to get the dough where I liked it. So basically it's no longer sticky. When you press down on it, it bounces back. It's nice and elastic. Then take a bowl, just drizzle some oil in it, put your dough ball in, move it around, flip it over till it's coated and then cover it with plastic wrap and put it in a warm place to rise until doubled takes about 30-40 minutes. While you're waiting, make your sauce. That's one 14 ounce can of tomatoes diced that has been well drained. I'm adding an eight ounce can of tomato sauce and a six ounce can of tomato paste. Now my little trick with tomato paste is, is I take a can opener and I open both ends. And then I just push on the top lid and push right through the can, remove that bottom piece, and then continue to push down on the top lid until all the tomato paste comes out. And then you just pick off that top lid. And it's a great way to get tomato paste out of a can without having to scoop it out with a spoon. Now we add some spices, two teaspoons of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of basil, about a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. That's a half a teaspoon of salt and just stir that around and that's basically the sauce we're gonna use for the pizza. Now that dough has doubled in size, I'm gonna turn it out onto the countertop and then just spread it out until I get approximately a 15 by 12 inch rectangle or so. I took a nine by 13 inch pan that's been well greased with cooking spray, but you can also grease it with olive oil and then take that dough and stretch it out into the bottom of the pan and press it up so that it's going at least halfway up the sides of the pan. Then sprinkle in two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. Then you're going to spread half of that sauce that we just made on top of the cheese. Now we're only using half of the sauce in this recipe. What you can do with that is put it in a container put it in the freezer and use it for the next time you make a pizza like this. Then sprinkle that cooked sausage evenly over the top and then add your sauteed mushrooms. Now in this particular case, I'm only adding them to about three quarters of this pizza, left a little section for Max at the end because he doesn't like mushrooms. Then I added a few pepperoni slices. And then sprinkled with an additional cup of mozzarella cheese and one half cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. Then you're going to cover this with aluminum foil and you're going to bake it at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 to 40 minutes and then uncover it and cook it for an additional five minutes just to brown up the toppings a little bit. 
And there it is right out of the oven. The recipe recommends that you sprinkle on some sliced fresh basil. So that's what I did. And it looks nice, the little green bits, and it also adds a lot of great flavor to it. So I recommend you do that if you have any available. This recipe is a winner. The entire family really enjoyed this one. And this is certainly one that I will make again. I had my doubts when I was making this because I've never made pizza where I've had to cover it with aluminum foil and bake it in the oven before. And I had some concerns with all that moisture from the, the sauce that is in the pizza. But you know what? The crust was nice and crispy and was not soggy at all. The center of the pizza is nice and juicy. And the toppings, like the pepperoni and the mushrooms and that mozzarella cheese, actually has a chance to cook up really well and gets a little bit crispy. So it has all the elements of a great pizza. Now, I don't know if this is even close to authentic Chicago deep dish pizza, but it's certainly one that my family really loved and we will be making it again. So I've put that second half of that sauce in the freezer and it'll be coming out soon to make another one of these pizzas. Thanks for watching and I hope you give this one a try. A special thank you to all my regular viewers. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're brand new to my channel, I have sweet treats Monday and Friday and usually a savory recipe on Wednesdays like this pizza recipe. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click on the moon in the center of your screen and that way you'll be notified of any new uploads. Bye-bye.